This is Medical Device Legal News. Today is May 23rd, 2023. I'm Sam Bernstein. On May 17th, Zoll Medical Corporation, a medical device manufacturer, agreed to pay $400,000 to resolve claims that it sold Chinese-made products to the federal government that were required by law to be made in the U.S. Zoll allegedly sold electrocardiogram cables, which are used in defibrillators and cardiac monitors, to federal government purchasers, including the U.S. Department of Defense, despite knowing that the cables were manufactured in China rather than the United States. Zoll also allegedly inaccurately represented to government officials that replacement ECG cables had in fact been manufactured in the United States. Under the Federal Trade Agreements Act, Rule of Origin, or TAA, certain goods sold to the military or federal government purchasers must be made in the U.S. or certain designated foreign countries, not including China. Under the TAA, products are considered compliant if they're manufactured or substantially transformed in the United States or in certain designated countries. Substantial transformation generally occurs when a product is transformed from its component parts into a new and different article of commerce with a name, character, or use distinct from its components. This substantial transformation test is highly fact-specific, is borrowed from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Analysis, Often, the CPB takes into a variety of additional factors in making country of origin decisions. Uh, accordingly, um, prior to making representations regarding the country of origin of your products, medical device manufacturers uh, should consider seeking a country of origin determination and carefully analyzing uh, where its products are manufactured or transformed. This settlement resolves claims based on breach of contract and payment by mistake and was entered into as an alternate remedy under the False Claims Act. This case is an important reminder to manufacturers that sell products to the federal government to ensure that they abide by their contractual and regulatory obligations. Federal supply schedule contracts, including Schedule 65-2A, Medical Equipment and Supplies uh, with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, must comply with the TAA. VA schedule contracts contain certifications that each end product is U.S. made or made in a, a designated country end product and requires a listing of products that are not made in the U.S. or in a designated country. Such certifications should be carefully reviewed as manufacturers can make false certifications by failing to list products that are not U.S. made or made in a designated country. Last year, a number of major medical device manufacturers entered into settlements, corporate integrity agreements, and paid significant amounts over violations of the TAA. On May 16th, the World Health Organization called for caution to be exercised and using artificial intelligence generated large language model tools such as chat GPT um, in the context of healthcare to protect and promote human, wealth, human well-being, safety and autonomy, and to preserve public health. The WHO is concerned about the pace of the adoption of untested systems leading to errors by healthcare workers, harm to patients, and erosion of the trust in AI. The WHO is calling for rigorous oversight of such AI tools, including ensuring the data that is used to train AI is not biased, addressing the fact that erroneous information may be presented in an authoritative or plausible manner, ensuring that appropriate consents have been obtained for the data on which AI is trained, ensuring that the AI protects user-provided sensitive data, including health data, addressing concerns regarding the dissemination of convincing disinformation, and ensuring patient safety and protection in the use of AI. The WHO previously identified six core principles on the ethics and governance of AI for use in healthcare, which are one, protecting patient autonomy, two, promoting human well being, human safety, and public interest, three, ensuring transparency, explainability, and intelligibility, four, fostering responsibility and accountability, five, ensuring inclusiveness and equity, and six, promoting AI that is responsive and sustainable. The use of AI in medtech presents a myriad of possibilities, but also implicates significant regulatory and compliance issues. As we previously reported last month, the FDA issued draft guidance regarding submitted predetermined change of control plans for AI, machine learning enabled software device functions uh, that would allow manufacturers to make changes to the products based on machine learning with, and training on new data without the need to submit a new marketing application to the FDA. One of the key areas of concern in health AI is the ability for AI to protect patient information. If AI is trained on personally identifiable information or other patient information, there's a risk that the AI could disclose that information. 
Moreover, AI could also potentially disclose information that is provided to it by its users. And accordingly, privacy functions will need to be written into its program. AI-driven decision tools could also raise innovative fraud and abuse concerns, uh, particularly if uh, a decision support tool recommends a particular course of action that may not necessarily align with the existing standard of care, uh, but the recommendation is based on data analysis due to the unique characteristics of the patient. So there's uh, concern um, from a, a payer perspective uh, that some of these AI tools, at least in the decision support space, uh, may raise innovative fraud and abuse concerns, False Claims Act concerns, um, and accordingly, uh, providers should pay attention to ensuring that if decision support tools are used, um, the recommendations of the AI are not blindly followed and that there is a provider validating uh, the recommended course of treatment, uh, not only to ensure the protection of patients, but also to align with payer requirements. Last week, another major medical device manufacturer continued the industry trend by cutting 4% of its workforce due to the current macroeconomic situation. This year, major medical device manufacturers, as well as smaller med tech businesses, have collectively laid off thousands of employees. On May 15th, in a research letter published in the JAMA Internal Medicine, researchers from Harvard, Yale, and the California San Francisco School of Medicine found that nearly 75% of class one recall notices issued by device manufacturers included incomplete unique device identifier numbers. The researchers reviewed 211 unique class one recall notices and determined that 56% of the notices were missing the de device identifier number. And of the 44% that included the device identifier number, 18% were missing a component of the production identifiers. UDIs are intended to assist with device tracking, particularly in the context of a recall. Um, however, unfortunately, all too often UDIs are frequently omitted from relevant documents, including medical records and other materials uh, where they would be very helpful in ensuring uh, that recall devices are recovered from patients. Manufacturers should consider training their sales representatives to remind providers to properly record UDIs when providing products to their patients or implanting products to their patients, including recording UDIs in medical records. Um, and manufacturers should also review the UDI processes to ensure uh, that they are up to date and that they include complete uh, the UDI identification numbers and that their production information is also included um, in the printed and stamped numbers. On May 16th, CDRH posted a warning letter issued to C-Long Medical Systems LLC, which was issued on April 4th. This is yet another example of the FDA issuing a warning ledger, letter alleging medical device reporting failures, uh, including a failure to maintain documentation of complaints and investigations, a failure to implement corrective and preventive action, and a failure to document why no investigation was conducted. Um, as we reported in prior weeks, the FDA over the last few years have, has issued quite a few warning letters um, addressing manufacturers' failure, not only in reporting medical device reportable events, but also maintaining documentation files evidencing their analysis when they decide that a complaint uh, is not required to be reported to FDA. The warning letter also alleges a failure to establish and maintain design change acceptance testing, a failure to maintain device master records and device history records, and a failure to establish and perform quality audits. The letter goes on to allege that the company made major and significant changes to the intended use of its products without obtaining the requisite marketing authorization and clearance from FDA. Uh, this product was a hood that was used to oxygenate patients and was typically, I think, attached to a ventilator. Um, however, during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as reported in the news, this product was allegedly sold as a substitute for a ventilator or used without ventilators um, to treat patients in need of a ventilator. Um, and that resulted allegedly uh, in the marketing and sale of their product and the FDA alleged that uh, the product was adulterated or misbranded as a result. The COVID-19 public health emergency ushered in the use of alternative devices, particularly in shortage circumstances, many of which were not in compliance with FDA requirements or otherwise not comply with FDA guidance regarding enforcement discretion or for which EUAs were not obtained. We expect the FDA and as applicable in certain circumstances, the Department of Justice to follow up with manufacturers that did not follow applicable EUA and enforcement discretion guidance during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This case 
further demonstrates the need for growing medical device manufacturers to ensure that they have a strong quality management system in place and to ensure that they hire personnel um, well-versed in the myriad of requirements of FDA compliance. All too often, growing medical device manufacturers um, move forward uh, and commercialize in the market um, and find, later find themselves in a situation where they don't necessarily have adequate uh, quality controls in place or the processes and procedures in place in order to ensure that they comply with FDA requirements. Thank you for joining me this week for Medical Device Legal News. I'm Sam Bernstein, a partner of McGuire-Woods Healthcare Group. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Sophie Moros, for helping to make today's program possible. I look forward to seeing you next week.